All right, here's where we want to get into. Here's something interesting, all right? And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. All right, so each gate is made out of pearl, actually, over here. Man, that is some city over here. Every several gate was of one pearl. So um, notice over here that, remember, three gates each direction, right? So several gate, it could mean a group of gates or several gates in one number. So each three gates could be as if it's one pearl, so to speak. That's the idea. That's what it could mean. And the street of the city was pure gold. gold. Even the street is pure gold. Look at our streets today. I mean, it's all gravel and dirty, and then you have to, I mean, you have to pay good tax dollar money to clean the streets too, for crying out loud, to keep it clean. I mean, streets is normally filthy, but the city is so pure that even the street is pure gold. That's something. As it were transparent glass. Not only that, it's transparent glass, so it ain't going to be dirty one bit. So it's not going to be like the streets of San Francisco where it's all filthy and dirt and dung all over and, you know, uh, dangerous drugs, broken, uh, broken stuff all over the street. Verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple there of it. So the Lord God Almighty, God the Father, and Jesus Christ the Lamb, they make up as the temple, so that's why there's no temple inside. And I already explained that to you a little bit uh, in our last Revelation study. There's no temple in there. But remember, uh, verse 23, And the city had no need of the sun. So the city does not need the sun, neither of the moon. It doesn't need moonlight to shine in it. They don't need those two uh, objects to shine on them. For the glory of God did lighten it. Because remember, God's the light. He lightens the city. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Jesus Christ is also the, uh, the light. Remember, Jesus is the light of the world, as one of the verses go. If you compare verse 22, 23, I explained to you last time, when you look at Revelation chapter 7, there's a contradiction. There is uh, basically uh, sun, moon shining, and there is a temple in there when the tribulation saints go to heaven. But what happens is now that we're entering in eternity, God's switching people to different locations. So as he's switching different locations, there's no longer a temple, sun and moon, like he did used to have back at Revelation 7. Okay. Verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved. Ah, all the nations around the world that are saved believers. So those are Gentiles then, right? See, these are Gentiles. Whatever nation that is saved around the world, who are these Gentiles? Now, this is where it gets interesting. You ready? All right, we're going to get into something really deep. Those that are saved shall walk in the light of it. They're going to walk in this light that New Jerusalem shines. So they're going to be visiting them. And the kings of the earth so these people, nations around the world, they're going to bring their glory and honor into this new Jerusalem. They're going to bring glory and honor into it. They're going to travel from their nation all the way to here and bring glory and honor to it. And the gates of it shall not be shut all by day. So the gates over here are never going to be shut. They're always going to be open. Now, I like the wording. Notice your Bible says the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. You notice that? It didn't say it won't be shut at night. It says shut by day. You know why? Because keep reading, for there shall be no night there. <laughs> That's something you want to run around the room. The gate's not going to sh uh, shut at all by day. Wait, you mean at night, right, Pastor? No, no, no. It's not going to shut uh, by day because there's no such thing as night over there. <laughs> That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, no night there. That's why the King James Bible words it that way. So all day long, all by day, it's never going to shut. It's going to be open. So notice that verse 24, 25, the nations are going to go inside these gates. See that? But there's uh, where it goes north, south, east, and west. Remember what Jesus said about the Gentile nations at the book of Matthew? There's going to be those from the north, south, 
east and west who are going to come to worship me. If he said that, look at this. There's going to be people who are going to be entering in their designated gate from north, south, east, and west, that means. So all these nations around the world has their designated gate to go to, kind of like the airports, the terminals, where they get that idea from, right? Did you go to your uh, designated gate? Well, it's going to be literal up there. These nations are going to go to their designated gate, and they are going to uh, worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, how do we know that? Well, here's the key. All right, go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and Deuteronomy 32. Ready to have some fun? All right, look at Deuteronomy 32 and Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and then we'll look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. Here we go. Now, the gates are 12, correct? So if each gate is divided for each Gentile nation, then that means this Gentile nation has to be divided into 12. Is that correct? Yeah, so these Gentile nations have to be divided into 12 parts, just like the 12 tribes of Israel who are representing each gate there. Wait a minute, then are you saying that each... So then these Gentile nations... They're divided just like the 12 tribes of Israel, you're saying? Yeah, look at Deuteronomy 32. Ready? Ready? Here we go, verse 8. Now, I hope you have a King James Bible, because if you have an ESV, you might uh, lose this advanced revelation, bless God. When the Most High divided to the who? Nations. See, these nations, just like these nations, right? Their inheritance. When he separated the sons of Adam. See, this is all... All of mankind from Adam, these nations. God gave them an inheritance, you got to realize. And when he divided it, look at this. He set the bounds of the people. How did he divide it by bounds? According to the what? The number of the children of Israel. Wow, did you read that in your Bible? Did you read that in your Bible? He's dividing them as if he divides 12 tribes of Israel there. And each gate is divided by each tribe of Israel. And the Gentiles are divided in that number. So it shows that they can go to each gate that they're designed to be in. See that? That's what it shows right over there. Now Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 19. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the star, uh, excuse me, when, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Now, remember my ra last revelation study? What did I tell you about outer space over here in the universe, these planets and stars? They, they are divided for the Gentiles. But how much are they divided, right? The rule of thumb, Deuteronomy 32, divided according to the number of the 12 tribes of Israel. So outer space is also going to be divided into 12 parts over here. So thus, now here's something interesting over here. When you look at the zodiac out there, there are how many? 12. Why? Because God divided 12 to the Gentiles according to the number of the children of Israel. Wow, wow, wow. So then where do these Gentiles go? They go to each uh, house within the Zodiac over there. Wow is right. Did you read that in your Bible? All right. Ain't that something? Yeah, all right. And of course, Bible study is boring, right? Go to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Man, that is something else over there. So each uh, group of nation, they're going to go to their designated gate as a visit from each of their house from the Zodiac, so to speak. That's something. Revelation chapter 21. 
Verse 26, And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. So, uh, again, it's repeating, verse 24, these Gentiles, they're going to bring their glory and honor of their nations into this new Jerusalem. Verse 27, And there shall in no wise, so in other words, there's going to be no way, that's the idea, there shall in no wise, there shall in no wise enter into it, so there's going to be no way on what's going to enter into the new Jerusalem, anything that defileth, anything that is defiling, neither whatsoever worketh abomination. So anything that creates abominations, they're not allowed in there. Or maketh a lie, people who make lies, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. If you're, those people whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, they get to enter into it. This perfectly describes your society today at verse 27. Anything that defileth, whatsoever worketh abomination, maketh a lie. That's our government, that's our school, that's our society, that's our toleration of religions, lifestyles, and yuck, yuck, and yuck. All of this, you got to understand, is not allowed into God's uh, New Jerusalem. It's only those who are, whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All right, now let's look at chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Ah, so that's why I drew it out over here. There's this pure river. It's not dirtied and sully. It's called the pure river. It's called the water of life. That's what it's called over here. This water of life, and it's clear as crystal. Wow, so everything's transparent here. It's clear like crystal over here. Man, imagine that diamond glow. You ever notice some of the women, they'll try to give this diamond glow over their skin or their face? But well, all of this is actually throughout this entire city. That's going to be something else. Man, how about that? Everyone wants to try to have that diamond glow. But all of that, uh, to be honest, is just fake. All of that is fake. But the real thing is up in heaven over there. So ladies, when you put that diamond glow on yourself, just think a little bit about uh, New Jerusalem a bit. Think about New Jerusalem, what it's going to be like. All right, anyways, I don't know if any of the ladies do that, but anyway, let's go back to, uh, I know some do. Okay, so let's look at verse 1. Let's look at verse 1. It's clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. So this water of life comes out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Now remember, it's the throne, right, of God and of the Lamb. So it's the Father and the Son. Why? What's going on here? Because uh, you got to realize uh, one God in three different persons. That's why. I explained it also at Revelation, a little bit at Revelation 2 and 3, basically. So because God is God, that's why the Son and the Father can be on this throne, so to speak. All right, let's keep reading. And his, uh, ooh, let's see over here. Okay, so verse 1, it shows this River of water of life that comes out of the throne of God. Now a lot of people, uh, verse 2, this is a confusion. In the midst of the street of it, so remember the streets of pure gold in the middle of that street, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life. Okay, so let me uh, explain these things one by one. First of all, there's a confusion here. It says either side of the river is singular tree of life. That doesn't make sense, right? So then how can the tree of life be on either side of the river and just be one? Well, it's not a singular. It's a plural, actually. There are trees. Uh, we're going to look at the book of Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel 48. It's not just one tree. It's trees. Well, why did the King James Bible say singular? Well, it's like saying, you know, uh, the dog is a man's best friend. Does that mean only one dog or it means dogs in general? See that? Plural. Plural. There you go. The lion is the king of the animal, so to speak. I mean, is that a singular animal lion or is that lions plural in general? That's the idea with the tree of life. It's referring to trees of life in general. That's the idea. All right, we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 48. Notice it's not just one tree. 
there are many trees over here. All right, Ezekiel chapter 47, excuse me, 47, verse 12, verse 12. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all what? Trees for me. So there are multiple trees over here. Multiple trees, that's the idea. Now, the last thing I want to say real quickly, and then we'll close for today, is that a lot of people think that Revelation 22 is the same thing as Ezekiel 47. All right? Now, I know that I tried to demonstrate something from Ezekiel 47 where it's plural and not singular, but you got to realize this is that Ezekiel 47, uh, this water of life and uh, these trees is not the same thing as Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. A lot of people will think they're the same. You might say, uh, why aren't they the same? Because the reason why is verse 1. If you look at Ezekiel 47, verse 1, notice that the water comes out of the temple. See that? Read verse 1. It comes out of the temple there. Remember, New Jerusalem has no temple. Another thing, the water comes out of the temple, but the Bible says that uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 1, water comes out where? From the throne. Comes out from the throne. That's another thing. You'll notice that verse 12, it says sanctuary there. See that? So this is all uh, temple-based. This is all temple-based over here. So that's why there's a distinction uh, between these two. Why? Because if you read Ezekiel 47, that looks like it's taking place on earth. See that? Remember, who's reigning on the earth? It's Israel, right? Ezekiel 47 uh, is talking about the nation of Israel in their eternity, how they would reign. As they reign in eternity, they're going to be reigning on the earth, whereas the Christians were in New Jerusalem. But see, because it's all part, uh, we, we serve, uh, it's all from the same design of our Creator, that's why the patterns are going to be similar on Israel and New Jerusalem. See that? On the earth and New Jerusalem, they have similar designs and pattern. Why? Because they're from the same designer. That's the reason why. All right, verse 2, uh, I really want to cover this deep doctrine, which I couldn't. So I tried to squeeze it, but we'll do it next week. Next week, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you next week with an interesting teaching that basically each Gentile nation, they have to come from their zodiac house and visit, uh, and each of them visit once a year, designed for each month with different groups of nation to partake in the tree of life to maintain their immortality. Next Revelation study, all right? Not today.